Go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to the book of 1 Thessalonians. And are you going to translate for, yeah. for her? Maybe y'all can sit okay. over here on the side. I think that would be okay. Would you mind? No, 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 that's fine. I think that may help everybody else be able yeah. to concentrate. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm really thrilled to be here with you all. I think I've gotten a chance to introduce myself to everybody that's here and uh, to be able to get your name. And some of you are a member, some of you don't, but uh, we'll work on that throughout the week. And I am from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Who knows where that is? Anybody? All right. A few of the old people know where it's at. But it's in South Carolina. How many people know where South Carolina is? Yeah. All right, that sounds good. I'm from somewhere in South Carolina, and uh, so I'm excited to be down here with you guys. So some of you I got a chance to meet, and you know that I used to live here in Fort Lauderdale. As uh, soon as I got out of college, uh, I went to North Carolina State University up there uh, to study engineering. And I graduated from NC State and moved to Florida because everybody who lives in the Carolinas wants to live in Florida. And everybody in the that lives in Florida. I didn't learn this until I moved here. They want to live in the Carolinas. So I, you know, I, I just didn't know all that. But I moved down here, and I lived here for five years out in Margate, Coral Springs area. Y'all know where that is? So not far from here. And uh, right down here on 3400 Commercial Boulevard is the Florida Department of Transportation, and that's where I used to work a uh, five years. So I don't live here anymore, but I used to live here, and it's good to be back in Fort Lauderdale. And uh, looking forward to the week this week. I hope that you will come to every single service. Now, I just am curious here, by show of hands, I'm going to ask you, how many of you normally would not come here tomorrow, Sunday, for services? You would not normally come to this church on Sunday. Would you raise your hand? I wouldn't normally come. All right? Now, I want you to come tomorrow. Okay? Make it a point to come uh, it will be a help to you to always sit under the preaching of the Word of God and purpose in your heart uh, to come. Just make the decision now. Say, you know what? These guys are here. They're trying to help me. Uh, they want to be a help to me. And just make it a point. Decide right now, you know what? I'm going to come tomorrow. Okay? Tomorrow is the most important service of the week. And I don't want you to miss it. Okay? So come tomorrow for Sunday school. What time does Sunday school start? Jose. Jose. Ten. Ten o'clock. All right. Ten o'clock. And uh, do y'all go and get people if they need to? If they need a ride? If you need a ride tomorrow morning, you'd like to come talk to uh, somebody and make sure they know so they can come pick you up. But I want you to come here tomorrow, and I will be looking for you tomorrow. All right? And uh, that will be a tremendous blessing. All right. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. Right, it says this, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. I want to talk to you very briefly this evening about how to receive the Word of God. Did you hear that word that was in this verse twice? The word receive? Okay, let's look at it again. I want you to look for that word. It says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye... What's the word? Ye receive. receive the Word of God, which ye heard of us, ye... What? Receive. Received it not as, it, as the Word of men, but as it is in truth, the Word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Alright, Anthony. You... You know how to quarterback? All right, come up here for a minute. You know, whenever I'm reading the Bible, I like to take a word, like the word receive here, and I like to think to myself, you know, what is the Bible trying to teach me? What does this word mean, and how can I better understand it so that I can apply it to my life, so that it will make a difference in my life, okay? So I look at the word receive, and I think, you know, where have I heard this word before, all right? And in football, I've heard this word. Right? What is the word in football? Receiver. The wide receiver. That's right. All right. So the wide receiver is supposed to do what? Receive. Is what what? Receive. He's supposed to receive the football. All right. You you're a quarterback. All right. Why don't you walk down the aisle over there? All right. And you're gonna throw it to me in just a minute. All right. Now, 
in order to help us understand what it means to receive the word, all right, we're going to use a football illustration, and hopefully if he makes even a somewhat of a decent throw and he doesn't kill these people right here, then I'm going to be able to receive the football. All right? All right, so let's give this thing a shot. Ready? Here we go. Here comes the pass. I'm out here. All right, what did I do? You received the ball. You caught the ball. I caught it, right? And what am I doing now? I'm holding it. I'm keeping it right out. It's in my possession, right? I have, I've got it. It is, it's mine, right? Okay? Listen, this is kind of what it means to receive the word, okay? Now you can have a seat wherever you are sitting, and in a few minutes I'm going to ask you to help me again, all right? Because we're, we're not only going to learn how to receive the word tonight, but we're also going to learn how not to receive the word, okay? Now, professional football players, a wide receiver, I don't know, how much money do you think they make? Millions. Too much? Is that what I heard? Millions of dollars. On a contract, Millions of dollars, right? And this wide receiver, I mean, all they have to do is get open and catch the football, they make a right? Touchdown. So the quarterback, he stands back right there, he launches it up in the air, okay. and then wherever it goes, all right, that wide receiver's job, he's to get under it, all right, and he's to catch that ball, and he is to receive the football, all right? Now, to apply this to preaching, what does this mean? Well, the preacher is kind of like the quarterback, okay? When he stands up here like Pastor Price did earlier, or when I'm standing here right now and I'm preaching the Bible to you, okay, it's, it's kind of like I'm throwing you a pass, all right? I'm taking the Word of God and I am publicly proclaiming it. I'm preaching it for you, man. I've launched the ball out there. I've launched the Word of God to you, okay? So now, did you know that whenever you listen to preaching that you have a job to do? Did you know that? No. You have a job. Anytime the Bible is being preached, you have a job, and your job is to receive... The Bible. It is to receive the Word. It is to take what is being preached, what is being taught, and then apply it to your life. Okay? And if you don't do that, you're really missing out on what the Bible has for you and what God has for you. Okay? Now, we're talking about the book of 1 Thessalonians. Okay? Now, uh, the New Testament... It's kind of laid out into a couple of divisions, all right? So I'm going to ask some questions. I just want to see where, where you guys are, kind of like a Bible quiz, all right? If you know the answer, you just shout it out to me, okay? Now, if I was going to take my New Testament, and I wanted to read in some book of the New Testament, I wanted to read about the story of Jesus Christ when he was walking on the earth, right? Which books of the Bible would I go to? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, those are the Gospels. They're the first four books of the New Testament. So everybody here can learn tonight. If you want to read about Jesus, whenever Jesus was walking on the earth, you want to read about what he did, you want to read about his miracles, you want to read what he said, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay? Now, right after uh, the book of John, all right, comes another book, and it is the book of Acts. Okay? Now... We will go to the book of Acts if we want to learn what happened right after Jesus left. Okay? Now, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're like historical narratives. Okay? So they're telling the story about Jesus whenever he was here. Now, what happens at the end of the Gospels? Jesus goes where? To heaven. Jesus goes back to heaven. Okay? Now, in chapter 1 of the book of Acts, we find Jesus going to heaven. All right? And he tells everybody else what he expects of them to do. So what we find in the book of Acts is the history of the beginning of the church, okay? So we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's where we would find stories about Jesus. Now we have the book of Acts. So that's just telling us about the history right after Jesus left, okay? Now one of the central figures in the book of Acts is a guy by the name of Paul. You've all heard him before, right? He's a preacher. He went on a couple of missionary journeys. How many missionary journeys did he go on? Not one. Not two, but... Three. three. He went on three different missionary journeys. All right, he went around, and what did he do? He started churches, planted churches, and all these things. Now, he would go, and he would go to cities, and he would preach in those cities, and some people would believe the gospel. Okay, so then there would be some Christians there. He would start a church, but then Paul, he'd leave, and he'd go to another city. Now, on occasion, Paul wanted to communicate with those churches. So what would he do? If you know the answer, shout it out. He would write a letter. All right. Now, we refer to those letters in the New Testament, not as letters, but there's a fancy word for it. What's the word? Epistles. Okay. Now, 1 Thessalonians is an epistle. Okay. So, in other words, at some point, Paul went to Thessalonica, the city of Thessalonica, and he preached there, and then he left. 
And now he writes a letter back to Thessalonica so he can help them in their Christian walk. All right? Now, 1 Thessalonians happens to be the first book of the New Testament that was ever written. All right? So I find it fascinating because it's really helpful and uh, we want to look at this. Now, here we are. We're in the book of 1 Thessalonians. But I want to go back and I want to see about what happened whenever Paul actually went to the city. When he went to Thessalonica. All right, now, I've already given you the answer, and if you're paying attention, you'll know this question. Which book of the Bible will I go to to find the background or the historical narrative for the writing of the book of 1 Thessalonians? Acts. Why would we go to Acts? Because it's the history of the church, right? And that's where we find Paul going around to all these uh, different cities. Okay, so now take your Bible. We're studying about how to receive the Word, but we want to see what's happening here, so we're going to go to the book of Acts, and we're going to go to chapter 17, okay? Acts chapter 17. Now listen, if you get this down pat, you're going to know, you're going to know actually a whole lot about your New Testament, how it's laid out. You know what the Gospels are, you know where to find stories about Jesus, you know what Acts is, this historical narrative, you know where all the epistles are, all right? Those are the letters that's been written to these churches, all right? So you know a lot about your New Testament now, if you did not know that before, okay? Acts chapter 17, we want to pick it up in verse 1. We're talking about Paul here. He's traveling on his missionary journeys. And uh, verse 1 is going to talk about he's going through a couple of different cities. Alright, it says, Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica. Alright, so this might be kind of like saying, look, he went through West Palm Beach, and then he came to Fort Lauderdale. Alright, so Thessalonica is just a city, just like Fort Lauderdale here. And Thessalonica was actually on the ocean, on the Mediterranean Sea, so much like Fort Lauderdale is here. All right, so they came to Thessalonica. And there was a synagogue of the Jews, verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the Scriptures, opening a legend that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Okay, so here he goes. Paul goes into the city of Thessalonica, and he finds a Jewish synagogue. He goes into the Jewish synagogue, and they allow for him to preach. And he is there for three Sabbath days. So how long is he there? Three weeks! we got a winner right over there, okay? So he's there for three weeks. The Sabbath day is Saturday. All right, so he's there. He's preaching, and he's teaching. And what's he teaching them? He's teaching them that Jesus is the Christ. He's teaching them that Jesus is the one who was prophesied about in the Old Testament, the one, the very Son of God, who would come from heaven, be born of a virgin, live a perfect, sinless life, and yet die on a cross. Now, why did He die on a cross? He died on a cross to pay for your sins. And He died on the cross to pay for my sins. And He died on the cross to pay for Pastor Price's sin. The Bible says that all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Listen, if you're here and you've never trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, that means that you are in big trouble with God because you are a sinner. And the Bible says because of your sin, you deserve to spend an eternity in a real literal place called hell whenever you die. Everybody look back there at that back picture. All right, this is a very interesting painting, and I would love for everybody, in fact, I'm going to walk back here, I would love for everybody to just sit in front of this thing and stare at it and look at it and observe all the details that are in here, okay? Well, let me just explain to you what this picture is, okay? Right here is a big city. It might be Fort Lauderdale. Look at all the lights, all the things happening, all the, all the different things, okay? And uh, it says here, all these different people, okay? And all these people are headed straight to what? Hell. The Bible says that broad is a way of destruction. And many there be that find it. Okay? Listen, most people that we meet, most people that we bump shoulders with out here in Fort Lauderdale, they're on this path. They're on this path, all right? They're following all the flashy lights, they're partying, they're having a good time. They can care less about the things of God, and then when they die, they're going to go straight to hell because they've never understood the fact that they're a sinner, the fact that they need to go to hell, and the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for their sins, okay? But listen, that's not all that's going on in this picture. Right up here, we find here a very interesting shape. What is that? The cross. That's a cross, okay? Now that is showing us that the cross provided a way for us to be able to go to heaven. That's what's represented over here, okay? This is heaven over here. This is hell down here. Most of the people are going to heaven, but you know what? There's a few people. Narrow is the way, and few there be that find it, that what? They make where? They make it to heaven. But what's the difference? If you look really close right here, this is a church. 
These people are carrying their Bibles. There's a person right here. He's a preacher. He's preaching. There's people being called out of the crowd to be able to come up and go to heaven. You know what? Man, that's an amazing thing. And I don't know. I don't know you guys. I don't know anything about you guys. I've asked uh, the preachers to tell me just a little bit about you, but yes, and I don't know if the people in this room, I don't know which path that you're on. Maybe there's somebody here. You know that you're a sinner. You know that you deserve to go to hell. You know that your good works aren't good enough to get you to heaven. You've never trusted in Jesus Christ alone to pay for your sins. And if you haven't done that, man, you can do that today. You can do that today as we conclude this message. You can say, you know what? I don't know what it means to be saved. I'd like to be saved. And uh, I'd like to talk to somebody about that. And we can make sure that you know that you're on your way to heaven tonight before you leave. Okay? Now, Paul, whenever he went to Thessalonica, these guys in the back, if you would, kind of sit up and look at me so I know you're paying attention. All right? I appreciate that. I talked to you all about that before, right? All right, I want you to keep looking at me. All right? Keep your head up. That would be a real help to me, the preacher. I like, I like to be able to see eyeballs. When I'm looking out there, all right. I like to look for eyeballs, right? And if, and if you're looking back at me, I know you're. I know you're listening. I know you're with me, right? That sound good? All right, that'd be great. Okay, so he's there and he's preaching. Okay, he's preaching. Now that's what. That's like the quarterback throwing the ball, right? All right. Now let's see what happens in verse four. In verse four it says, "And some of them believed." Amen. And consorted with Paul and Silas and of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few. Now listen, Paul came, he preached the Bible, he preached the Word of God, he preached about who Jesus was, and some of them believed what was being taught. Now listen, we talked about how to catch a football, how to receive a football. If you want to receive the Word of God, it's by believing what you hear. It's by believing what this book says. It's by believing what is being preached, okay? You don't have to turn there, but I'm going to flip over. I just want to read a verse to you. The book of Titus, chapter 1, says this about preaching. It says, in verse 3, it says, But in due times, it's talking about God, hath manifested His word through preaching. Now, this word manifested is a kind of a big, like, $50 word, okay? Does anybody know what manifested means? Yeah, all right. Sort of, okay? Now, let me explain to you what manifest means, okay? Now, I have something in my back pocket. You don't know what it is. But I would like to manifest to you what it is, okay? It will be a little bit of a disappointment, okay? It's really nothing special. But, what is it? It's my wallet, okay? Now, I just manifested to you my wallet. So, what did I do? I showed it to you. I made it known. To you. You right? You got me? Alright, well, when the Bible says that God has chosen to manifest his word through preaching, he's choosing, God has chosen to reveal the truths of his word to you by preaching. Okay? Now I didn't choose this method. God chose this method. And you know what? If you want to learn the Bible and you want to grow in the things of the Lord, and you want to learn this book, guess what you need to be doing? You need to be sitting under the preaching of the Word of God consistently because that is how God manifests to you His Word. Now, you should be reading it on your own. You should be studying it and all of those things. And certainly you learn about it that way as well. But there's just something about the preaching of God's Word that every person needs. And you need it every week. And you don't need it every week just one time. You don't need it just on Saturday for youth group. You don't need it just on Sunday morning at the end of the morning service. You don't need it just on Sunday night. You don't need it just on Wednesday night. Listen, you need it Saturday night. You need it Sunday morning. You need it Sunday night. You need it Wednesday night. Listen, whenever I was your age, I was not going to uh, the right kind of church, okay? And, uh, you know, I just, I just, I didn't really care about going to church, you know? And I just went whenever my parents went, and it wasn't a big deal. If we went, it was great. If we didn't, it was great. You want to know how much I learned about the Bible when I was your age? Yeah. About nothing. You're absolutely right. It's a pathetic excuse, my testimony, that I didn't learn more. Whose fault is it that I didn't learn more? It's my own fault. Okay? Listen, if you want to learn the Bible, if you want to learn about God, if you want to have a close relationship with God, you're going to have to make it a purpose. You have a purpose in your life, like Daniel's purpose in his life. You need a purpose in your life that you're going to be here when the Word of God is being preached. You know, Pastor Price, I, I don't know him very well, but I know this. He's given his life to be a preacher. Now, I just want to ask you guys a few questions about preachers. 
Did they make a lot of money? Yes. No. <laughs> no. Do you think that Pastor Price could have gone to school, to college for something else and made a whole lot more money than he is? Absolutely. Do you think Pastor Price could live in a much nicer house than he does if he had had a different job? Absolutely. Now, why did Pastor Price give his life to preach the Bible? Well, God asked him to do that. He said that he would. And do you know what the job of a preacher is? The job of a preacher is to study this Word so that he can preach it to people like yourselves and so that you can be helped. Now, preaching is for you. Man, that should be exciting. You should be excited every time that you come to church because He has been preparing specifically for you to teach you about God, to have you can have a close relationship with Him, and so that you can live a life that is pleasing to God. Listen, that's exciting. And whenever you hear the Word being preached, it's your job to receive it. Okay? It's your job to believe it. Alright, now that brings me to my next point. In verse 4, we saw that some of them believe, but I want you to look in verse 5. In Acts chapter 17, verse 5, it says, But the Jews, which what? Believed what? Not. They didn't believe it. Listen, every time the Bible is preached, there are going to be some people who believe it, and there are going to be some people who do not believe it. Now, I'm not going to take the time to read through the rest of this narrative here, but you can do it on your own in Acts chapter 17. You know, these people that believe not, they find each other, and they gather together, and they cause an uproar, and they fight against those who have believed the Word of God. They fight against them so hard that Paul is kicked out of town. Three weeks is all that he was able to be there, and Paul gets kicked out of town, and he goes to the next city, Berea. He starts going there and he starts preaching there. And the people in Thessalonica that believe not, they get so mad that he's preaching in, that, in Berea, they go over to Berea and they run him out of Berea. So you know what? Whenever you hear the Word of God, listen, if you reject the Word of God, if you choose not to believe the Word of God, you are choosing rebellion against God in your life. And there will be a contrast between you and someone who has believed the Word of God that is being preached. Listen, preaching is not child's play. Preaching is not fun and games. Preaching is serious business because you have a responsibility to receive the Word when it is being preached. Okay? Now, I want to... Uh, where's my quarterback? Alright, Anthony. I need help again, buddy. Alright? Now, whenever he throws the football to me, okay, I want to teach you how you cannot receive the Word of God. Everybody with me? Alright. Stand a little closer for this just so we don't break anything. Okay. Alright, I want you to throw, throw a shot right here, okay? Now, I'm not going to receive the word, okay? Go ahead. Try not to hit me in the face. Okay? What did I do? Huh? Well, I didn't receive it, but what did I do? Huh? Rejected it. I, I didn't really reject it, but what did I do? I just didn't try. I didn't do a stinking thing. You know what happens most of the time whenever the Word of God is preached? That right there. People just, they just listen, man. They just, they're just like, Ooh. I'm hungry. I wonder what lunch time is. Okay. Now listen. And you can, you can reject the Word of God by just doing nothing. You've got a purpose to receive it. All right? A, a professional football, he doesn't catch the ball by accident. He intentionally chooses to catch it. He intentionally chooses to receive it. That's the way you have to be with preaching too. You have to purposely receive it. Okay? Now here's another way that you can reject it. All right? Throw me the ball. Right. What did I do that time? You rejected it. Now that time I rejected it. You know what that means? All right. Here comes the word of God. It's coming to me. You know what? I don't like what it says. You know what? I I I don't. I don't care what the Bible says. I don't want to do that in my life. And you just reject it. You're like I don't want the Bible in my life. Okay. Now listen. Bad. But just sitting here and not doing anything. That's bad too. You've got to be purposeful. Thank you very much. You've got to be purposeful about receiving the Word of God. Okay, what am I trying to get you to understand, young people? There is a responsibility that you have where you sit whenever the Word of God is preached. 
It's your job to respond to the preach. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. It's your job to respond. If you're not responding, man, it's like you're doing nothing. You're rejecting it. Maybe not intentionally, but you're still rejecting it. God can't work in your life. And you've got you to receive the word. You know what I want you to do this week? I want you to receive the word. I want you to receive everything that's being said. I want you to think back tonight whenever you go home and you go to sleep. I want you to think back about the things that Pastor Price had to say about Daniel. Purposing in his heart. Standing up for what is right with his friends. I want you to think about what I've said about how God manifests His Word through preaching. And the fact that you need to make it a point to be under the preaching and teaching of His Word. If you want God to work in your life. And I want you to think about what it means to receive the Word. And the fact that it's your job to receive it. Okay? So now how would you receive this message? Well, you need to understand that, hey, I have a job. Whenever I come and sit under the teaching and preaching of God's Word. Okay? I've got a few minutes, so let me just share with you one more thing here. Uh, take your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 6. I want to teach you something about yourself that is just so, so important. If you can grab a hold of this, it will absolutely change your life if you can figure out how to apply this to your life and make sense of it, okay? Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16 says this, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Alright, Luke, stand up here for a minute. Okay, the Bible here refers to, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, the fact that there's two parts of you. There's an outward man, and there's an inward man. Okay, everybody, everybody saw that there in that verse? An outward man and an inward man. Now, what part of Luke are you looking at? The outward. The outward man. Okay? Now, all right, if I slapped him, that'd be his, that'd be his outward man. Okay? You with me? Okay, now, let's imagine for a minute that Luke gets to be like, you know, 80 years old, he lives a nice long life, and then he dies, okay? And he's at the front of the church again, but this time he's in a casket. You with me? Mm -hmm. All right, he's 80, he's in a casket. What part of Luke is in the casket? His body. His body, the outward man, is the outward man. You got that, the outward man? All right, now, a preacher's going to stand up and he's going to say, you know what I knew, Luke? Luke was a, was a great kid. I mean, he, he was a sinner just like the rest of us. But you know what? He had trusted Jesus Christ as his Savior. And right now, I can tell you on the authority of the Word of God that Luke is in heaven. Now, wait a minute. I thought he's right here. What part of him's here in the casket? His outward. All right, so what part of him's in heaven? His inward. His okay, soul. question for you then. Which is the real you? His soul. The inward man. Now listen, young people, this is so very important. Most young people and most adults, they live to please this one. The outward you. The desires of the flesh, the desires of the body, they live to please that one. But there's an inward man. It's your soul. It's that part of you that is eternal. Right? Now listen. Thank you, you can sit down. Whenever... Someone is preaching. This is important. Don't miss this, okay? Whenever someone is preaching, your outward man, through your ears, are listening to the preacher preach the Word. You with me? Right? You're hearing it in your outward man. Now, whenever preaching is taking place, I get so excited when I'm preaching because of this dynamic right here. The Holy Spirit is talking to your inward man. Now you can't you can't hear you can't hear the Holy Spirit. Okay? You don't hear him audibly. He doesn't speak to you. You can't hear him like like I'm talking to you, but you know what you can hear? You can hear him in your spirit. A lot of times whenever you're hearing preaching, maybe you're hearing preaching about uh, the fact that you're a sinner and that you deserve to go to hell and your good works won't save you and Jesus Christ died on the cross and then the preacher's up here talking talking about getting saved, and the Holy Spirit is speaking to you on the inside and saying, hey, He's talking to you. What He says is true. That's right. That's what the Bible says. You need to trust Christ as your Savior. The Holy Spirit talks to your inward man. Now listen, this is something that'll, that will change your life if you'll get a hold of it. Right, Anthony? Because Anthony's looking up here and he's paying good attention to me, right? Alright, whenever 
You come and you listen to preaching. How many voices should you be listening for? Two. Two. You listen to the preacher's voice. And you listen to his teaching from the Word of God. And then you listen for the Holy Spirit. And you listen for the Holy Spirit and how he's speaking to your inward man. I cannot tell you how many times I have sat under the preaching and teaching of God's Word. And he's talking about subject A. And God's talking to me about subject C. Has that ever happened to anybody but me? It's amazing. I don't know how it is. The pastor, he's up here, he's preaching about, oh, I don't know, being separate from the world, or he's, he's preaching this and that and the other, and, 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 and God's just convicting me about, I don't know, some television show that I'm watching, or whatever it may be. But listen, you listen for the preaching of God's Word, and listen, and let Him work in your life. And then you listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you respond, and you receive what it is that He is saying to you. I tell you what, when you realize that that's taking place when preaching is happening, you know what happens? You get excited about coming to church. You get excited about sitting under the preaching and teaching of God's Word because you're looking for God to speak to you. Now that's amazing. Now God wants to speak to you this week. God has already been speaking to you when Pastor Christ was preaching and maybe when I'm preaching just now. God's been talking to you. He's been talking to you through His Word. He's been talking to you in your spirit. And I don't know. I don't know what God's been talking to you about. But you know what? It's your responsibility to receive whatever it is. Whatever God's talking to you about. I'm going to have an invitation just in a second. I'm going to ask for every head bed to be bowed and every eye to be closed. And I'm just going to ask you very simply if God spoke to you. Would you like to respond to his word? Okay. Father, I thank you for the opportunity we've had to be here this evening. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for caring about us. Lord, thank you for putting together this uh, series of uh, revival meetings uh, this week. Father, I pray that each and every kid would come back tomorrow, and Lord, that they would give you the opportunity uh, to work in their lives with every head bowed and every eye closed. Let me just ask this question. I, I touched briefly on the gospel about how a person can know for sure that they're going to heaven whenever they die. I wonder if you could be completely honest with me and just by raising up hands, you'd say, you know what, preacher? There is no doubt in my mind. I know with certainty, absolute certainty, that I will go to heaven whenever I die and I can give you a Bible reason why. Would you just raise your hand right where you sit? Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. And hands down. Not everybody in this room could raise their hand. And I appreciate your honesty. Now listen. If you would like to talk to somebody tonight about how you can know for sure you're going to heaven when you die, every head bowed and every eye closed, would you just slip your hand up like we said? You know what? I'm not sure I'm saved, but I would like to talk to somebody about it. I don't want to go to hell whenever I die. Anybody like that tonight? And let me ask this. The Holy Spirit talked to you about something today? Some area that you need to work on? Now, I won't know what it is, but would you just raise your hand so that this preacher can pray for you tonight? Say, you know what? God's been talking to me. There's something in my life I need to get right. Yeah, I see that hand. That hand. Yes, yeah, several hands all over the place. Listen, it's your job to receive the Word of God. Okay? Now, I don't know what God's been talking to you about. I don't know how He's been working in your heart. All right? But if you would like to talk to somebody, about what God's talking to you about so you can get some help from the Bible. I'm going to give you just a minute here, an opportunity to slip out and go to the back so I can take a Bible and try to help you with whatever it is that God's talking to you about. Okay? So let's all stand to our feet just right, right quick.